Hi guys, it's Debbie, and after covering the best films and the best series of the year, it's now time to speak about the worst of the worst in 2020 filmmaking. As every year, I would like to remind everybody that my expertise in filmmaking is probably limited to creating these videos. I wouldn't even be able to achieve a fraction of what went into the into the production of these movies. It's a little like uh, complaining about the Olympics while sitting on the couch. So let's take it all in good spirit. As always, please let me know what you think about the titles I picked with a comment down below. Let me know what you've been watching and if you have any particularly terrible experience to share with us. Now, starting off, we have a film that already all the way back in February, I had sworn would have been on this list because it's very hard to make something worse than that with such a big budget. I'm not speaking about a small independent B movie. This is Fantasy Island produced by Blumhouse, who are very well known for creating some pretty good horror movies like Insidious, The Invisible Man, Get Out, as well as other non-horror award winners. So there were heaps of cash poured into this. Columbia was behind it, Sony was behind it, it even had a pretty famous cast, but it just all went terribly wrong. This is one of the worst rated films of the year, and I'm actually pleased that I didn't even get to spend that much on it because my sinner was having a special Valentine's Day offer. So at least it was a good bargain. The concept behind Fantasy Island isn't actually that terrible. Basically, the winners of a contest get to spend some time on a tropical island where they can pick one wish to be fulfilled. So for example, one of the guys picks to have an over-the-top party with anything you can eat and drink and the most beautiful guests. Another guy has always dreamed of being in the military, so they basically organize a sort of role-play situation in which he can pretend to be a soldier. But of course, all of this goes completely out of control. Their wishes transform into nightmares and it definitely doesn't help that they didn't just pick a fancy new car or a bag full of cash. Some of the people picked wishes such as, you know what, I really would like to take revenge out of my childhood bully. That doesn't exactly help the situation now, does it? This film is appalling. The storytelling is disastrous. None of it makes any sense and every different storyline is tied together just because it needed to be connected for the purposes of the film. I don't even mind weird, nearly supernatural elements being introduced into the storyline, as long as it's not done in a nonsensical way that just lowers the quality of the overall film. The character analysis was appalling. They're just all portrayed as spoilt kids without ever digging any deeper into their wishes. And you can tell the storytelling is bad when every character has to explain everything. They even, they're even talking on their own in certain moments to explain what's actually going on. Also, I've had it up to here with Lucy Hale being put in horror films in which she has to escape from her death, but in all her fancy outfits and uh, impeccable makeup and a perfect blow try. The same identical thing happened in Truth or Dare, when she was running for her life in high heels and lip gloss. Here it's even worse because she's in the jungle. Okay, let me cool down a bit. That was just <laughs> the first film on the list. Um, now we need to have a little chat about Adam Sandler. So last year, Adam Sandler starred in Uncut Gems, a fantastic film which was considered one of the best movies of 2019. The film was really well put together, it was engaging, and Adam Sandler surprised us all with an incredible performance. But although this film is highly praised within the film-loving community, critics were throwing five stars at it, when it came to official film awards, it was completely snubbed. I don't think it was even mentioned at the Oscars. And rumor has it that Adam Sandler was so disappointed by this general situation that he promised that in 2020, he would have created the worst film of the year, probably referring to his earlier years in the world of cinema where he was tied to some pretty bad titles. Um, well, he definitely didn't let that promise slip because uh, in 2020, Hubie Halloween was released and boy, was it terrible. And I really hope it was intentional. I think it was because it does feature a bunch of very famous actors who I don't think just turned up f to work and forgot how to act. Anyway, Hubie Halloween is the story of a guy who is always trying to keep his town safe. He is well known down at the police station for often reporting suspicious activities and he takes the spooky season very seriously, to the point that Halloween he's going beyond his limits to make sure the community is free from danger, he checks in on kids, he goes to parties, he's going around town checking on everybody, but of course there's something going on, after all it's a Halloween movie. Now, problem number one, 
This film looks like a parody of older Adam Sandler movies, the kind in which characters would over-exaggerate their reactions to something, they'd get scared and they'd tip everything over, just everything was over the top. I really hope this was all intentional, but this still doesn't excuse it from its bad film status. Problem number two, the character depiction is awful. Sandler's character is made to be the good, wholesome guy, but who is always bullied by others, but his depiction focuses on pretty normal traits, such as having a speech impediment. This kind of depiction is funny in films like The 40-Year-Old Virgin. It's having a laugh about the character's situation, but it's more about how he has to have his whole body waxed, or how he compares boobs to bags of sand. There are films like Four Lions or Jojo Rabbits that have us cracking up, but the topic is terrorism or Hitler. There is a famous comedian, Ricky Gervais, who is known for being particularly brutal in his comedy. He really does make fun of every person, every topic, seriously everything. But he's always said that in the end, it's not making fun of the person, it's making a joke out of the situation, the idea. I'm not being a social justice warrior, and I'm not saying that Hubie Halloween had to the goal objective of creating an award-winning uh, character analysis, but I really think that just little tweaks to Sandler's character would have made him way more goofier, it would have made the whole situation funnier, and made him more likeable. The highlight of his personality is that he's a loser because he likes soup. How awkward of him! Oh, now he's muttering, that's hilarious! It all just becomes forgettable. I mean, Mall Cop with the overweight guy riding around on a Segway while living with his mum had more personality analysis than this. Everybody in Hubie Halloween acts in an exaggerated manner. For example, Ray Liotta, who is known for being uh, in very famous films such as Goodfellas, here portrays a, a very exaggerated, stereotypical Italian-American character, the kind you'd find in an SNL skit. Steve Buscemi looks like he's acting in a middle school play, so I genuinely think and hope this was all deliberate, but that still doesn't mean it's suddenly a good movie. The only really fun aspect of this film is that nearly every character is a pretty famous name, so you just end up pointed at the screen for the whole runtime. Okay, now next up is Hit List, which is so bad that there isn't even a trailer for this, so enjoy the low quality grainy clips I am going to find in the depths of the internet. This film is basically the story of a spoiled rich kid who is fed up of his spoiled rich life and decides to make a list of all the things he wishes he could have done and he tries to do as many as possible on that list and he shares it on the internet and he invites other people to create their own. So of course most of this is talking to the girl you like, going swimming naked but the rest of it is sort of like all authority is useless and adults are idiots and I'm just going to get in trouble for the sake of it and the sake of the teenage internet aesthetic. Which actually makes sense if you see what's actually happening on social media, because however stupid the prank or the challenge is, there will always be somebody that copies it. On TikTok, we went from copying dance moves to point of view videos uh, of, of people interpreting victims of the Holocaust. But instead of taking this topic and making it a fun, interest, coming of age, teenage film, this all was a catastrophe. It just ends up as a narcissistic depiction of this protagonist, I definitely can't remember his name, who just uh, complains about his parents and cries about his life, how unfair his life is. I think there was an attempt to copy Ferris Bueller's Day Off, a film from the 80s about a kid who tricks everybody into thinking he's ill and skips school with his friends and they do a bunch of cool and definitely not allowed things. But this 2020 film transformed all of that into a trash product, with the highlight being the protagonist floating around in the pool, disrespecting his parents, his loser parents who are standing on the, on the side of it. This idea could have been adapted in such a better manner, it actually has already been depicted in a better manner in films such as Booksmart, about two teenagers who realised that they spent their whole high school experience just studying and not doing regular teenager things. So they decide to catch up with everything all at once before they go off to university, but of course they're shy and awkward and everything they end up doing is sort of goofy, it all ends up in a disastrous adventure and they learn their lesson. Okay, next up is a film that is so bad that it actually made it onto a very rare list, the Rotten Tomatoes 0% list, meaning it currently has 
zero positive reviews. There are very few films on that list. This film is terrible, but while at the same time trying to prove it is the complete opposite. It's called The Last Days of American Crime, and it's trying to get you to think it's a sort of John Wick meets Inception. It also tries to underline the grittiness of the whole story through some apparently very cool one-liners said from the hot guy to the hot girl at the bar while the world is coming to its end outside. Well, it turned out to be a series of cringe-worthy scenes punctuated by groans of disappointment. The idea behind this film is that the US government is about to activate a signal which will prevent people from breaking the law, as from the looks of the movie, the situation with criminality is pretty rough. The film opens a few days before this program is activated, in a moment in which the main protagonist is caught up in a series of illegal activities, sticky situations with enemies, debts and tricky alliances, which at one point I completely lost track of. Because the storytelling is so chaotic that there is no way of remembering who's who, which criminal stood in the way of the other gangster, who died in prison, what even the protagonist's name is, and just sprinkle some sex on the top of all of that, because when everything else fails, the hot chick might keep the audience's attention just a little longer. Also, the dialogues were terrible. I think they were meant with the objective of being deep one-liners, sort of the threatening words that add character to the story and create more mystery, but they were so awful and delivered with zero credibility. The concept of engaging gangster action, but peppered with really good dialogues, can be seen carried out excellently in another 2020 film called The Gentleman, which basically looks like a milder version of what The Last Days of American Crime actually wanted to be. A bunch of criminals, all tied together by a net of relationships and betrayals and tricky business details, something which can become a bit confusing unless it's all held up by really fun dialogues, something which The Gentleman did, and that is the difference between a 75% score and a 0% score. I don't have one positive thing to say about The Last Days of American Crime. Not one. Okay, then I was a little undecided about what to pick for the last worst film of 2020. Many people have said that Three Christs was absolutely awful. I watched it, and it wasn't half of what I was expecting it to be, but I wouldn't describe it as such a terrible movie, I just think it missed the opportunity of telling a really good story. It's all set in a psychiatric hospital a few decades back, when practices such as the electric shock were still carried out, and the study subjects are three different people who believe they embody God, or Jesus. But the only big issue with this film was that it took this premise and just sort of left it there. I mean, there are pretty worse movies out there. For example, there's an Italian film called Lockdown all'Italiana, which in my opinion is the absolute worst film of the year. But I'm pretty sure non-Italians would have never heard about it and will probably never watch it. So it is a little wasted on this list. But um, trust me, this is a film that should have never been made. I can't compare Three Christs to a film like this, or even some absolutely awful Netflix holiday movies which made me want to tear down my Christmas decorations. There was Capone starring Tom Hardy. Anyway, I had to make a choice and I eventually picked Doolittle, based on the famous children's books character Dr. Doolittle, who has the ability of speaking to animals. He is very eccentric, he lives in a zoo-like mansion surrounded by animals who interact with him, so of course it creates a lot of stories and adventures all kids and adults love. After all, who wouldn't want to speak to their dog or have a polar bear in the garden? Now after an older film adaptation starring Eddie Murphy, which to be honest I can't really remember much of, um, in 2020 the source material was adapted into a new film starring Robert Downey Jr. as the title figure. This film was heavily advertised, it had huge production costs, a pretty impressive cast, but I decided to include it on today's list because as many, many other people, I found it disappointing. It wasn't as bad as other films on today's list, but it completely threw away an opportunity. This could have been the beginning of a fantastic franchise, instead it was a jumble mess with Robert Downey Jr. just being the cherry on top of the clutter. The opening of the film isn't actually that bad. Uh, a kid accidentally injures a squirrel and brings it to Dr. Doolittle, who's retreated from society, he's let himself go, he's living in a rundown mansion, but surrounded by the animals he loves, and all these animals have their own peculiar features. I really like that part of it, film, but 
And then it just went down one mess adventure after the other. Doolittle's requested to assist the queen who has fallen ill. He doesn't want to go, then suddenly changes his mind. Then they're on a boat with things flying all over the place. The kid suddenly speaks to animals too. Then they're on a sort of Indiana Jones adventure to a mysterious faraway land which apparently is just a short boat trip from, from England. And the animation just progressively gets worse and worse. You have these incredibly detailed shots of like ostriches and gorillas and rats but then at the same time the waves from the ocean look like they haven't even rendered yet and apparently the film had already failed multiple test screenings when it was shown to a sample audience and it performed very poorly so a lot of the film was actually reshot and it still didn't manage to make it i think the solution in this case would be would have been less is more as for robert downey jr i have no idea what went wrong. I actually had to Google what kind of accent he was trying to do and apparently he was trying to do Welsh which in the end came out in a very weird manner and to my memory Dr. Doolittle isn't actually even Welsh and in any case his dialogue's only mostly limited to him complaining and um, mumbling to the animals. The animals are actually the ones that have the good dialogues. Anyway I would love to hear what you think about Dr. Doolittle if you've seen it as well as what you think about all the other titles on today's list. Remember that here on my channel you'll find my other videos about the best films and best series so make sure to watch those too. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye!